United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to do the recognition of visitors. We'll start off with the pride cards. I don't even know if we have any in here. Yeah, in June, okay. I don't know if we have any. I mean, I meant in here. Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Thank you. I think the first one's a relative. It is. <laughs> Caden Brock is our first pride card winner. Uh, this comes from Mrs. Clingan Smith's class. Caden takes care of the front doors every morning. He's a great helper. So when we come in door nine for the buses, we always have a little person that's holding the door. So Caden's been uh, locking that down lately. Um, Ashley Harris is our next student. This is a first grader from Mrs. Lewis's class. Ashley was our class dojo leader last week with 58 points. Great job being a role model and setting an example. So for those of you who don't have elementary Class Dojo is just a program where teachers uh, can get award students points, so 58 points is pretty impressive. The next one is Cade Thomas, and he's from Mrs. Woodard's class. Cade earned his way all the way up to outstanding on the behavior chart. He was ready to learn all day, followed directions the right way, and was a great helper to others. Great job, Cade. And then in third grade, we had Brendan Maltreat from Mrs. Bain's class. Brendan is very polite, helpful. He saw that Mrs. Saltzman was picking up trash in the hallway and began helping her. Thank you, Brendan, that's the Viking way. Our next student is a fourth grader in Mrs. Steffick's class, Brianna Smith. Brianna has shown a great deal of Viking pride during this time of the school year. Her kindness responsibility doesn't go unnoticed. You are awesome, Bri. And then in fifth grade, one of Mrs. Gage's students, Chloe Williamson. Chloe showed kindness and a, the ability to solve conflict. She settled a disagreement between two classmates by giving them one of her pencils. So nice job, Chloe. She put out a fire. <laughs> All right, and that's it for elementary. Well, good evening. Uh, we'll start with our uh, sixth grade student. Uh, Gabby Kistner, this is from uh, Ms. Ritz in sixth grade. Thank you to Gabby for showing diligence to the end of the month of May and to the end of the school year. Uh, our seventh grade uh, pride card winner was Maddie Cox, but I do not have her card here. Uh, I'll take uh, some blame for that. I is it here? That's the one that, uh, no, I don't have it. That's my fault, though. I forgot to make a, a photocopy of it before we sent the actual card home to her parents. So, And I can't recall who it was that gave it to her, but it was uh, all good stuff about Maddie Cox in seventh grade. Uh, and then for our eighth grade winner, uh, this guy's here. Come on up here, Cody. <coughs> Cody Stump uh, received a pride card from Mrs. McKay. It says, here, turn around so they can see you on there. Because you're on live, you're live right now, the whole world. Uh, thank you for taking the time to wait and hold the door for me when I had my hands full. The fact that you were willing to help and took the initiative without being asked shows your consideration for others. And I'll just add to that, Cody uh, shows that type of leadership all over our school uh, daily. I've said this about him many times. One other awards this year, and uh, you'll see these guys out of the weight room at 6 a.m. before anyone else pulls in because uh, they're always working hard and doing stuff. So give Cody a round of applause. Congratulations. <laughs> to take a minute to thank you for letting us do these pride cards. I know sometimes the kids aren't here, but it's really important. Um, 
it's it's fun to watch them, even the high schoolers. I, I, every month, these kids also get a movie-sized box of candy. And they come in the high school office like they've won $500 because <laughs> they got free candy. So um, it, it, it makes a difference. And thank you for entertaining us in, in doing this. I think it's really important. Um, ninth grade is Mrs. Um, Mrs. Wise gave a card to Samantha Baronet. Sam goes above and beyond in English class every single day. She does extra work to get all she can out of her classes. Um, tenth grade is Zach Sainer. Thanks for uh, all your hard work. As an elementary gym aide, he works with Coach DeVise. Uh, the students really look up to you. Our 11th grade winner is Cole Hurd. Uh, for Mrs. Dennison, thank you for uh, being a great student aide. Also, th thank you for helping clean the PE equipment room every day. And then our senior, uh, Nick Wise, from Mrs. Wolf. Thanks for carrying all those heavy easels. Uh, down to the media center and you can see them here. Those things are pretty cumbersome. So um, thank you again for letting us do this. Okay, and then next is the board recip recipient for uh, our Waterloo Board uh, Scholarship, which went to Shelby LeBeau. Did I say Ernest name mm -hmm. LeBeau? I am always amazed when we get these awards and then we have to read through these essays there wasn't a spot in her life she didn't miss on that essay from the top to the bottom of what she is going to do. I mean, Brian knows a little more of her. Than you know, I was just commenting that we get these, like this year I think it was for 14 or 15, mm -hmm. and they're numbered, and I didn't know which one was her. Me neither. Number, but yeah, but there was some very, she was, there was some very impressive. Uh, and um, I actually uh, threw them away prior because I usually go back, but once we did it, I thought, I'm, I thought for sure I knew who would get it, and it wasn't who. So when I wanted to go back and look at her thing, she was the only one that I kept out because her essay was so long, <laughs> but it was detailed from top to bottom on, I wish we could just give them all, but unfortunately we can't. Oh, we'll move on, roll call. Okay, Pussetary. Here. Brock? Here. Fletcher? Whittlesey? Here. Gum? Here. Can I get a motion to accept today's June 8, 2017 regular meeting? Moved. I'll second it. Roll call. Whittlesey? Yes. Brock? Yes. Pusseter? Yes. Gum? Yes. And then president's report. I don't have, a probably top off of what you have in your report. So superintendent's report. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We got to, oh, these visitors. Okay. So let's, I hesitated. okay, you because should have said we, something. We, that before the, <laughs> uh, before we, call we do call have Miss Merla, Miss Davis, and I've seen two other people walk in. I'm assuming you're here for biomed too. Um, the way the board normally does it, and we probably will stick with it today, is we take one speaker, and I'm going to guess it's you, Ms. Merla. You can tell the board, superintendent, everybody, you know, what you want. Most of us are familiar with it, but not everybody is up to date on everything because we're still getting. It's not going to be a question and answer. Unfortunately, as you know, Biomed has not contacted Waterloo yet. We only know what's going on because of you guys coming to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, okay. And you can go okay. ahead. Okay. I have um, a copy of our statement. You can follow along. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Brown, is
Now, I know Mr. Raven's going to touch a little bit on it during his uh, time, but unfortunately, when you guys leave here, there's not going to be an answer for you tonight. The board, there's too much right now that... We understand. So. 
Can we resume back to the president's report? Or the superintendent's report? Okay. Right. Um, I'll start with bio message you just spoke on. What, what we, had, uh, we had talked about meeting uh, sometime next week, um, she and I, and sometime next week, right? That's right. Okay, all right. Um, so on to other things. Uh, Teacher of the Year, I just want to report on that for Stacey Wolf. We're very uh, happy to report for her. Not only is she the Teacher of the Year, but she also retired after 31 years of teaching art. So we want to congratulate her uh, for that. Um, other things, the Avalar and United the Methodist donation uh, donated the the Atwater United Methodist Church donated $420 to help out our pay-to-play students. Uh, we, uh, we have students in need or in financial need. We, uh, we've been uh, lucky enough to have generous uh, churches and, and other groups to, to uh, donate money, donate funds to help out the students. So we're very grateful for uh, Atwater United Methodist Church. Um, the levy update, we're going to have a, a, a levy campaign kickoff of some kind on uh, June, excuse me, June 22nd. That'll be in the evening, probably 7 o'clock. Well, it's, it's going to be a little different. We had a, a great turnout. Uh, as you guys know, we had a great turnout with, uh, with, uh, with a lot of people. Some people from the community, a lot of teachers, uh, administrators helped out. And we had a lot of students involved, and we were, we were very happy with that. This is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to really trying to work with uh, more and more of our community, more community involvement. Uh, teachers are on summer break. I offered uh, for them to uh, to come in on their summer break and help out with the levy campaign. So uh, hopefully we'll get people to, to chip in there, uh, as well as the administrators if they're free. But really to, to get more involved in, in the community to try to find those uh, votes. We're looking for uh, um, 8.25, am I right? 8.25 mills. Continuing operating levy, and uh, you know we have already lost, uh, we've already lost some some teachers within the district, and we've lost some more programming, and, and we continue to chip away at our at, at, at what we do so we can live within our means. And, and uh, this is not to add anything anything new. It's not to add a fancy stadium or anything like that of that nature. What we're looking to do is just continue uh, to maintain our current programming to be able to offer what we do. And we do it at a pretty high level, so we'd like to continue doing that. But we'll be looking for the kickoff on, on June 22nd. And the last thing I'd like to do is thank uh, Star Shones. Uh, they've been extremely generous with our school district. As you know, they donated quite a bit of money for the, um, whatchamacallit, the uh, scoreboard on the football field. They've also donated another 25000 for uh, weight room, our weight room to be updated. That's a very important aspect of uh, uh, athletic success. Get those kids in the weight room, get them working out, and we already have uh, a lot of kids that have been pop actually been working out uh, all year, right? Some coming in early, some coming in uh, late, but uh, but we've had a pretty dedicated group. So we think that you know, with their generosity, uh, Sarshon's generosity, we think that will that'll expand interest with our students. So we're very thankful for their uh, their help. All right, and that's what I have. Treasurer's report. So just a reminder, on June 29th at 6 o'clock p.m., we have the year-end meeting to close out the financial fiscal year um, 17. So just a reminder for that. And then also you'll notice down on the consent agenda tonight, we have a resolution to approve uh, the record retention schedule RC2 and the record disposal schedule RC3 report. Uh, we'll touch a little bit on this in a second here. Recently, uh, for those of you who don't know, I had the opportunity to give Mr. Pusateric, John Pusateric, a treasurer internship. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Mr. Pusateric is a 2010 Waterloo graduate. He's also a 2015 graduate of Akron University, where he majored in accounting. 
overview of the treasurer internship. The treasurer internship consists of 300 hours in the following areas. Uh, overview of treasurer and business office, financial management, fund accounting, financial reporting, purchasing and business functions, legal slash legislation, administrative and other duties, and then other areas appropriate to the particular district and its needs for a total of 20 hours. Mr. Pusateri has chosen to go through the district's uh, archival records. He came up with the prescribed manner in which we have to retain and dispose of things through the state of Ohio. Uh, so tonight, uh, when we get to the consent agenda, uh, he can speak of the project he worked on and the information before you tonight for your approval. That's all. High school update. I'm not going to be, I probably there's about a 75% chance I will not be at that June 29th meeting. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Brian. Oh, that's okay. Um, Sorry, Brian. Just wanted a few things. Yay, it's summer, so uh, we started today. Uh, confirm, you know, just getting all of our schedules together. So as soon as we get our student schedules all set, we'll be sending those out. Um, Working on budget pieces, uh, curriculum purchases happen over the summer. So um, before teachers left yesterday, um, they submitted all of those. I worked diligently all summer to try and um, reduce our costs. Amazon Prime is amazing, believe it or not, for curriculum. Just you know, a few books here or there. So we do some nice things that way. Um, we created some new classes in the high school to support some of our struggling students, so that's nice to have some of those both in math and reading for next year. Uh, graduation was a huge success. Um, it was just, it's one of my absolute favorite days. I just love um, seeing those kids and, and watching them um, <coughs> make that transition. So um, we had a great day. It was nice to see um, such a large crowd. Um, before school ended, we had our Ride for Life event. Um, that was a huge success as, as well. Um, the, the man that runs that all has contacted me to see if we can do some things over the summer um, and then to continue kind of that whole process in the fall. So hopefully we'll be able to do that. Um, Maplewood's graduation was a, couple, or a week ago. That was, that's always um, to see so many people at Kent State um, it's really nice. It's a nice event, and they do a really nice job um, honoring it and, and seeing all the students through that process as well. Um, our honors dinner, our first honors dinner, <coughs> was a huge hit. Um, we had lots of um, lots of nice comments. Um, I got a few emails that were really touching, just to say thank you um, for honoring our kids that way. The teachers, I think, were. Um, very surprised to hear what the students had to say about them. So we will definitely continue that for next year. Our Viking of the Month reception was the same, much of the same. Um, lots of great comments about that process as well. Um, we had our senior awards banquet. Um, we continued our senior walk through the elementary and the middle school. Um, so those were all year-end events that went really well. That's all I have. Middle school. Uh, just a few things uh, updating from the middle school perspective and, and my perspective. Um, the poverty simulation that uh, myself and a couple of teachers and um, even uh, like Mrs. Koontz from the elementary, the secretary, uh, we attended that poverty, sim poverty simulation in uh, Bedford uh, last month uh, and it was very powerful. If you've never been through something like that, I can't tell you a lot of the details or it doesn't have the same impact on you. Uh, but you basically live a, a, a month of uh, being in poverty and having to experience uh, the challenges that you face in that. So uh, that was very good and it got us, gave us some good discussion with other folks from different school districts. And um, I'll be attending the training coming up at the end of the month, some additional training uh, with regards to how school districts can um, combat issues that develop with poverty. Uh, through some different strategies, instructional things, uh, things like that. Um, 
our, our, like, like Lori said, our end of the year activities, we had field day and, and kickball tournaments and just a plethora of uh, things. The, the eighth grade uh, recognition this past Monday evening, just a lot of different activities and everything just went off without a hitch. And that's a compliment to our staff, uh, to our custodial staff, our secretaries, even our bus drivers, um, uh, especially our teachers and parents and students that really worked together uh, and collaborated to make all that uh, work very seamlessly and smoothly. And I was just really impressed with the students also the last several days of school. I mean, you know, you always have a few uh, weird situations, but uh, overall, uh, for the most part, our kids just, just did a great job. Uh, the last day especially was fun. I put on some shorts and played basketball with some kids for a while. I was outside at one point uh, running around with fifth grade kids, and uh, everyone just got along and, and had a great time, and that's that's really what it's what it should be about, and I, I appreciate Waterloo in those regards. We do a lot of those things very well, and if anyone would say to me this isn't educational, uh, I would be upset by that because I do see a lot of education even happening in those non-structured uh, situations. Uh, the middle school was, uh, I'm very thankful that we had Travis Bornstein from Breaking Barriers in um, just a couple weeks ago. He had a very nice assembly uh, and a powerful message that pre presented to the middle school students about the dangers of, of messing around with prescription drugs, specifically opioids and painkillers, and how those, uh, those little experiments that people don't think much of or kids kind of experiment all of a sudden those things can lead to addictions and further problems in their lives. Uh, so we were thankful for his message and um, a, lot of, a lot of teachers came away from that assembly saying we really need to have more dialogue with the students on these issues. <clears throat> and, and that brings me to my next point, um, which is uh, some interesting uh, classes and courses that we'll be able to offer at the middle school next year that will incorporate some of that um, drug awareness and drug prevention type type information. Uh, due to the, we've had to change up the middle school schedule pretty significantly due to our um, decreased staffing with our uh, teachers. And that's a district-wide issue, so you know, you've got to kind of pull and piece together things. And we were able to find a period here where a teacher could come down and teach a class or share some staff with the elementary. And what, what that's actually caused is it's, it's had a, a, a small benefit in a way because we can put some extra content and programming into the schedule. So our eighth grade students, I'm excited about this, they're gonna get some uh, special classes next year and the four core teachers will teach uh, that, but we'll do some things on like sustainability and recycling and science class. Um, as I said, uh, some, some drug prevention information like in a personal development kind of class. And then um, a journalism class and also a, um, I'm drawing a blank, um, digital citizenship class, where kids really, uh, we investigate dangers and, and uh, things that you should be aware of living in a digital society where you, social media and, and everything is electronic and there's so much, uh, there's a lot of room for, for potential problems there. So that's a, that's a good uh, benefit. Finally, I wanted to point out uh, other staff movements that we've had. Um, we've had some, with the reductions from the elementary, uh, we've had some teachers one or two moving up to the middle school that'll be joining us next year. And um, I'm just impressed and proud of our teacher teaching staff who have embraced those folks with open arms, um, shared content with them. People were moving classrooms over the past couple of days. And it, I mean, it looked like, uh, you know, when your kid goes off to college in the dorm, the kids are all helping each other move into the dorms. They were helping each other, sharing content, sharing books and things. And so that's a good thing. It shows, um, you know, we're, we're frustrated with the levy turnout. Um, but we're not going to let that uh, deflate our morale. We're going to uh, keep fighting and keep working for our kids. That's all I have. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I think last time I talked to you guys, we talked about some of the end of the year things that go on at the elementary. and. Uh, just like Mr. Walker said, that was all success. So we had our end of the year award ceremonies, we had our field day, we had several field trips um, that every class got to go on at least one. Um, we had our teacher of the month for May, which was Mrs. Pusateri. I have a couple of in here, but 
Uh, she was nominated by her uh, fellow staff members for the incredible work she does, so congratulations to her. She really pours a lot of time and energy into just about every lesson. I've been so blown away by the, the prep work that she does for her lessons and the, uh, the amount of students that just love having her in class, so congrats to her. Um, next, I would like to just give out some thank yous for such a great year. Tammy, I call her my boss. She is. I report to her every morning. <laughs> she was, uh, you could really see her in action on field day. She was out there with a clipboard making sure every event was uh, going just as she wanted it. And uh, I think she was here at like 5 a.m. I asked her what time she got. I'm pretty sure it was dark when she was here. <laughs> but um, she it puts in. dark the night, she, the night before when she left. Yeah. <laughs> She pours in a lot of time, so a huge thank you to her. Um, Thora, I wouldn't go uh, board meeting without mentioning you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, Thora Green has been a mentor, a friend, um, somebody who invests a ton of time with me and, and uh, fellow teachers in ensuring that we're providing excellent education to our students. So. I can't thank her enough for everything she does, not only for our building, but the entire district. Um, next, I'd like to thank Karen Alderson and Wanda Nicola. They spent, uh, I got emails from each of them over the weekend about scheduling for the upcoming year. They were uh, putting together spreadsheets and they do some impressive work too. Our kindergarten team of um, Beth Moon, Kim Shondrick, Brenda Radish, Kathleen Klingensmith. Kindergarten has a ton of events at the end of the year and they always do such an amazing job with all of those. Our parents rave about uh, the kindergarten team. Our special ed team, the Sullivans, um, Mrs. Merck. Mrs. Merck is another one I consider a mentor. She's someone who uh, gives me excellent perspective on uh, student needs and in the programming we need to do, so she's just been an incredible resource. Uh, Bob Hamilton, you can't have a bad day if you've interacted with Bob. He is, he's one of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. Um, I could go on about all our different teachers. We have some awesome teachers down there. Uh, our board members, I'd like to thank all of you. You guys have been so supportive. I don't, I don't think uh, you can find too many districts where the lines are always open. I see you guys at so many different events. You have families here, your graduates, uh, Waterloo. It's just been, that's been awesome. You guys have been so supportive of, of administration and we're very appreciative of it. Um, speaking of administration, I'd like to thank all of you. Um, Lori's been a constant resource since I started here. Somebody who I can always bounce ideas off of. I think I was bouncing an idea off her this morning but she's always uh, been a great resource for me and somebody who's helped and guided along the way. Mr. Walker, he and I do a lot of tag teaming down in our neck of the woods. Um, Warren Hutchinson, who's just been awesome with special ed. This is her first year as an admin and she's done an incredible job with it. And uh, Mr. Bremen and Mr. Carpenter, they're always available. Um, to, again, bounce ideas off of and discuss things. And um, it's very much a team approach here. With us all being on one campus, we can always have impromptu meetings so that we're, we're making decisions that aren't snap decisions and, and well thought out with a lot of different opinions. Um, so it's been Mr. Carpenter and Mr. Bremen are always a, a text or a phone call away and they're, they're on top of something. So it's been, it's been incredible. Um, the parents here at Waterloo have been tremendous. Sorry, I hear the, the Oscar music coming on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, our PTO has been incredible. Candy Shifley is, I swear she's an employee here, and I know she has a full-time job where she travels too, but she's here just about every morning in our mail room, putting things in teachers' mailboxes and getting schedules together. Um, and just all the parents. We have a lot of positive parents that love this district, and it's just been, it's been an awesome experience. 
And finally, I can't forget about my students. They were, they were awesome for, uh, for three straight years. We have very little behavior issues. Um, we have a lot of kind, respectful, uh, well-raised kids. Cody's a, a prime example. Cameron Merlin, who's here tonight, she's another example. She was, uh, I don't think you ever got a B in elementary, did you? No? <laughs> so, so we have, we have students that uh, strive for success and uh, the teachers here in place to help them get there. So uh, we have all the ingredients here at Waterloo and it's, uh, it's tough for me to leave. So I just want to thank you all for, for everything over the last few years. I think it's crazy too because it's hard for the uh, administration to get used to oh now we got another principal coming in how's this going to work out but it affects the kids because i have sure. one that is just going crazy and he told me a story today about how he's you know mr streeter we're not getting a girl principal are we you know? <laughs> so he's <laughs> i know he's in jason he's panicking he's in like panic mode because every day he's we can't have a mrs streeter <laughs> <laughs> so I know the kids are definitely going to miss you. Thank you. Maplewood? Uh, Maplewood, same graduation went well, a lot of the end of the year events. Um, we got m many, many comments on Maplewood and how the programs are doing so well up there. And um, that's really about all I have. We didn't have a future or a future program this last month, so we'll see what Jim brings next week. Legislative? Nothing? Any new business? Nope. I was hoping Mike DeVise would be here because he was going to do a sports update. We had lots of sports people. I know Amber Saplinski, she got the, uh, was she one of the athletic of the year? County player of the year. The county player of the Softball player. Yep. For Waterloo. That's all I. That's all I have on sports. I just wanted to say thanks to Mr. Schrader. Kind of neat. I wish you nothing but the best. I remember came in for half a year basically, and then been here three years, right? Yes, three four years. And it's nice to see you grow. And, and uh, man, it's been really nice to nice to stay back and watch. So thank you. Wish you nothing but the best of luck. And we're going to move on to the Kassin agenda. Is there anything you want to point out on that, or can I get a motion to a do it? We'll take the first and second, and we'll discuss. Okay. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. second. We got Brian and Adam. Uh, Diane's good. Roll call. Mr. Terry. Don't we want to do the discussion first? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, we'll do the discussion. <laughs> so just under, again, the records retention and disposal item C under Treasurer's Business, I'll let Mr. Pusateri come up and talk to you a little bit about what he's done. Uh, the records retention and disposal is one of those animals that over the years, it's, you know, you just kind of box things up, you throw stuff in the file cabinets. Um, those things just tend to stack up with the intention of always getting around to going through the process to uh, dispose of those items, but it's a, it's a timely, timely feat. So I'll let Mr. Pusteer go and let you know what you did and uh, explain uh, what you're voting on today. Um, good evening. I would like to thank uh, Waterloo Board of Education, Sean Bram and Todd, um, for the opportunity to speak here tonight. While I was working towards my 300 hours, uh, Todd one day mentioned that uh, record retention might be a good place to get some hours. And I didn't believe him at first, then we took a little tour, and I thought I was pretty impressed with uh, the 
it wasn't just junk, it was like the history of water. It was unbelievable to see from 1970, 1967 to all the way now, like you can see when the first building plans for the whole <coughs> school was, you know? So seeing the whole encompass, like being a Viking, you know, parents went here, hopefully one day my kids go here, you know, and it just is great to see all that just come to fruition and just everything happens for a reason, I guess. Um, Lisa and I attended a webinar at Stark County Sport, I mean, Stark County ESC uh, about records retention. Um, so it gave us a lot of great information of what we can and can't get rid of. So we had to start off with the RC2. I just gave you guys one of these. Um, basically, this is just a master schedule that has everything on there of what we have. Basically, it's just letting us know what we have, what we don't, like what we have. We could put two items on here, we could put a thousand items on here, you know, so we put as much information on there as we could. Then the RC3 is the disposal record. So this is all the stuff that we're going to be going to get rid of. There's certain things like um, board meeting minutes, uh, IEPs or individual educational plans, and student record orders that you can't get rid of. But there's things in here like um, agendas, old applications, field trip forms, you know, things. Uh, the one big thing that we had a lot of is cash register receipts and, you know, just the register receipts. And we had a whole bunch of those. So it would be nice just to get rid of some of those type of things and uh, get everything uh, squared away so we can keep moving on and keep putting in for better, uh, better things. Um, so well, once we get the board approval, we will send the RC2 in, uh, get that approved, and then we'll send the RC3 in to the Ohio History Connection. Um, after that, uh, we will have Shredit or another company similar to that come on site and shred all the type of documents so nothing's getting leaked out or anything like that, so there's no personal records. Um, Thank you again for this opportunity. This uh, internship has given me a great understanding of how a school district is managed, and especially from the treasurer's point of view. Um, I can really see how difficult some of these things are that we're going through as a district is, are right now compared to other districts. You know, um, I have a very good friend, actually a colleague, uh, he did the internship at North Canton, and they don't have problems like we have. They have three, three printers, they have laser engravers, you know, so. Seeing it from our point of view and then seeing it from that point of view, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for everything that you guys do for this community. Do you guys have any questions? i just like to add Mr. Cook's to excel in his internship, and I don't think it'll be, he still has a couple classes to take, school finance and school law, but I don't think it'll be long before he'll be in the, the school finance arena himself. Is that what you want? You're wanting to be in a school? Yeah, yeah, be a school treasurer, hopefully someday. Um, got to take the right steps, and, you know. Not just say, hey, I'm going to be a school treasurer. You know, you gotta <laughs> get in there and learn and get everything squared away. Get professional. Thank you. Thank you. That's Roll call. Mr. Terry? Yes. Whittlesey? Yes. Dump? Yes. Broth? Yes. And Diane thought he might want to say something real quick. He didn't sign in. That's fine. Did, yeah. Did you want to speak, Neil? <coughs> well, I guess I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a couple I'm minutes. I'm glad to see that we are talking about having some programs. But we're way behind the curve. This thing is out of control. And in fact, it's the worst problem the school has. It's your worst problem. I mean, 4,100 kids died last year. If you have a town that had 41 people in and disappeared, we'd be upset. But people don't seem to be too upset. I don't understand it. 
But we have to have these courses here at the school because we have a captive audience. I'm a member at our congregational church. We've had the door open Tuesday nights. Not one person ever showed up about drugs. So I think the thing is, you have a captive audience here, and you have to have more drug stuff going on here about drugs. I mean, start. I mean, it's a serious take a five-year-old kid, make him into a fifth grader, 11 years old, into a killer. We certainly keep our kids off the drugs because it's it's our future. It's terrible. I just we're completely out of control. The whole country's out of control. It's one of the biggest problems you have. So the school has a big place to take care of this. They got a lot of responsibility, and it's not kind of in their thing, but it is in their thing because what does it do to keep your kids in jail? Or in drugs. I mean, a huge loss. We gotta do something. And I have some ideas. I have some good contacts to get talks. And Franklin County has a great program. They should come up here and present it because you you love the program. It's wonderful. We'll look into it. Okay. Yeah, I'll get I'll get the information for you and uh, okay. we'll be talking to each other a little bit okay. about it. So I really want to help because I really want to see something happen. I, it makes me sick to see these kids just you know, just destroy themselves. I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you for your help. You're welcome. Well, that concludes our meeting. Um, I know with you biomed parents, somebody will contact you guys. I don't know if you're still meeting with Mr. Brayman at a later date. Or we are meeting yeah. with Mr. Brayman, but are you suggesting that someone will contact us? No, that'll be... Uh, that, that'll be... Uh, no, no, that'll probably be. Uh, I'll be in touch. Okay, so none of you will be responding to any emails that we send to you? Well, I respond, I mean, on behalf of the board. And I responded today, okay. earlier. I'll check yeah. That's before I left, I didn't see it. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, it's hard to even discuss it when there's just so many different. It's hard to wrap your head around. Exactly. But somebody will we'll get there. Can I get a motion to go into executive session? Sure. Okay, so you. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So moved. Second. There you go. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming. <laughs> I think Todd said so moved. I've heard that he But it just basically the dates and hours I work in the webinar. Oh, okay.